This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll free, 1 800 610 7035. Email X Zone at X Zone Radio TV.com. On all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV and our website, www.X Zone Radio TV.com. It's been nearly 155 years, X Zone Nation, since Darwin's. On the Origin of Species was published, ushering in a new era of how humanity views itself and all life. Now, to explain how evolutionary biologists works, uh, scientists have relied upon a premise known as natural selection, which simultaneously accounts for the diversity of life while tracing all species to common ancestry. As sweeping as the evolutionary account is, geophysicist and Discovery Institute's director Stephen C. Mayer says it has always left says it has always left when significant questions unanswered. For example, how to explain the explosion of biological information that suddenly came into existence during the Cambrian period some five hundred and forty five million years ago. Well, joining me this hour to help understand is there a missing link in Darwin's theory of evolution? Is uh, Stephen C. Mayer. He is the director of the Discovery Institute Center for Science and Culture and a founder of the Intelligent Design Movement. And uh, Stephen, welcome to the Exxon. Great having you with us. And 155 years ago, it seems just like, you know, a stone throw into a pond where all this all this um, new way of looking at life came around when Darwin came out with the, uh, the origin of species. But is there anything missing? Does it make sense to you? Is it real? Well, there's definitely an important event in the history of life that Darwin was unable to explain, and that event is precisely this Cambrian explosion, mm-hmm. which is the, uh, the first appearance of all the major groups of animals which appear very abruptly in the fossil record and this puzzled Darwin for two reasons first of all it it contradicted his understanding of how the process of natural selection needed to work he, according to Darwin natural selection acted on small incremental variations that took a long time to accumulate and yet what we see in the fossil record is the the geologically abrupt appearance of these complex forms of life and secondly, Darwin depicted the history of life as a gradual branching tree in which uh, complex forms of life should have emerged very gradually from mm. simpler pre-existing forms. And yet again, what we see in the fossil record is this very abrupt and sudden appearance. Uh, so on, on both counts, uh, the, the Cambrian explosion puzzled Darwin, and he actually wrote about this in The, in the Origin of the Species and said that the, the Cambrian explosion was a, a valid objection to the view, views here entertained, was the way he put it. So do we really know what happened, how we got here? Well, the, uh, there are a lot of unanswered questions in evolutionary theory and evolutionary biology. And what, what I do in the, in the book Darwin's Doubt is I actually trace the, I tell the story of the doubt that Darwin had and show how it's grown up to become illustrative of, of a much bigger problem in evolutionary biology than even Darwin understood. And part of the reason for that is the, the continued absence of these ancestral or presumed ancestor fossils in the lower Precambrian strata. 
But the other reason that the Cambrian explosion has become, uh, has pre presented such a mystery to contemporary evolutionary theory is that we really don't have an explanation from within standard materialistic evolutionary thinking for the origin of these forms of life, for what caused them to come into existence. And that's become very much more mysterious in the in the last 50 or 60 years it's because of everything we've learned about the the importance of information biological information the digital code that's stored along the spine of the dna molecule which we now know is necessary to build the complex uh, proteins and cell types and indeed whole new organisms so if you want to build a uh, a new organism, you've mm -hmm. got to have the new code, the instructions. It's just like in the computer world. If you want to give your computer a new function, you've got to give it new code. That's right. And, and so building new animals requires new code, new instructions, and that's the big question. Where does that come from, and how would the Darwinian mechanism of natural selection and random mutation uh, generate all that information? Exonation, our guest this hour is uh, Stephen C. Mayer. He's the author of Darwin's Note, The Explosive Origin of Animal Life and the Case for Intelligent Design. His website is www.darwinsdoubt.com. That's www.darwinsdoubt.com. And Steve and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, if you'd like to visit our website, it's www.xzoneradiotv.com. And uh, don't forget, we are trying to help Sylvia Anthony raise money for her new Sylvia's Haven. Visit her website, www.sylviashaven.org or www.sylviasdream.com. Org. Be part of a solution. It takes a real person with dedication to humanity to step in and say, hey, I'll help. We'll be back. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at Elizabeth.Joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, 
then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Explanation. Uh, Stephen Mayer is our special guest. He's the author of Darwin's Doubt, The Explosive Origin of Animal Life and the Case for Intelligent Design. His website is www.darwinsdoubt.com. Let me ask you a question, Steve. Why would the average person care whether or not an intelligence is responsible for our existence or a random series of events? Well, that's a great question. I think um, the, the question of biological origins speaks directly to the really deep questions in philosophy and uh, what you might call a person's worldview. Mm -hmm. It's certainly a question of, of science. There's no question about that. We're looking at organisms, we're looking at fossils, we're looking at uh, genetics and molecular biology to, to try to uh, garner the clues we need to make sense of, of what happened a long time ago. But every, every worldview has to answer the question, what is the thing or the entity or the process from which everything else came? It's the, it's the, the issue of origins is, is critical. And whether you answer that question in strictly materialistic uh, way or if you answer it uh, by reference to some kind of purpose of intelligence, that's going to really dictate uh, the kind of worldview you hold. And for the average person may wonder, is there any, is there any purpose to my existence? And if we live in a universe that was the result of purely unguided, mm -hmm. undirected material processes, the answer to that really ultimately can be no. It's the only purpose that you have is what you can find during this brief time we're on Earth. But if there's a purpose of intelligence behind everything, there's a possibility that there may indeed be uh, some higher purpose to human existence and, and some ultimate purpose, perhaps even an afterlife. So the, the um, issue of biological origins ends up uh, speaking to to these bigger philosophical issues as well as the the narrow uh, and very interesting on its own uh, scientific issues so are you saying that this flaw in darwin 's uh, theory may actually prove creationism was 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 how it happened that in seven days God created the heavens and the earth and everything that we are part of? Well, I'm arguing for something a little different. It's called the theory of intelligent design. Intelligent design is different than creationism in mm -hmm. two ways. Creationism is, creationism is based on a particular interpretation of the biblical text, and specifically right. the, the uh, idea that the days of Genesis are literal 24-hour periods, and therefore mm -hmm. the, the uh, age of the earth is very, very young. Um, and it's... Um, the, but the theory of intelligent design isn't taking a position on the question of the age of the Earth. I myself think that the Earth is very, very old, billions of years. Uh, and secondly, the theory of intelligent design is, is based on scientific evidence. It's an inference from the biological evidence, not an interpretation or a deduction from a scriptural text. It's something very different than, than creationism. Um, but I, I do think there's evidence for, the, for, the, uh, for a designing intelligence playing a role in the history of life. And um, if you come to that view, that's certainly consistent with uh, uh, a broadly theistic perspective on the world. Are there biologists and other scientists, professors, and philosophers who actually agree with you? Oh, very many. Um, the the uh, institute that uh, where, where this is our program, the Discovery Institute, uh, has a number of scientists directly affiliated who are physicists, uh, mm -hmm. uh, biologists, um, historians and philosophers of science, and there are many scientists around the world who are uh, sympathetic to the views that we're developing. So this is a, a scientific-based research program. Um, at our institute, there's a, a quite prominent biologist who used to be at the Smithsonian Institution, uh, named Richard Sternberg, and in 2004, um, he was editing a journal called The Proceedings of the Biological Society of Washington. It's something published out of the Smithsonian mm -hmm. Institution. And he published a paper that I had written, which was actually a parody to the, the book that um, we're discussing. And uh, Sternberg uh, 
found that after allowing the, the publication to go through peer review, that he was very aggressively 